This week's episode is sponsored by the following. Salutations, wrestling fans. Welcome to another edition of Superstars of the Ring. I'm your CCW pitchman, Donnie Harris Jr., and the theme for this episode is Bashes from the Past. With this being the eve for Wrestle Bash 30, we thought we would open the archives and go back in time and see some of the highlights and big matches from the past 29 Wrestle Bashes. So sit back and relax as we take a little stroll down memory lane.
Hardcore Wrestling fans, welcome to this week's edition of Superstars of the Ring. This match will be for the CCW Southern States Championship. And there you see the Southern States Champion, a member of the Society of Sin, that is Dante Steele. Looking as sinister as ever. In the ring already, Logan Stevens, the Jesus Freak, the former Southern States Champion, looking to regain his championship back from Dante Steele here at Wrestle Bash 25. From the Society of Sin, here is Dante center of the ring, ready to go to battle. And there it is, that is what they are competing for, the Southern States Championship. Logan Stevens, a big fan favorite here in CCW, taking on the hated Dante Steele. And we're going to get started with a little bit of technical wrestling in the center of the ring. Come on, y'all. And a reversal by Dante Steele. Trying to fight out of it. And still takes him down with a shoulder tackle. And Logan Stevens getting the fans riled up, getting on his side. You can tell Dante still does not like that. They square off again. Who's gonna come out with the advantage in this one? It's like Logan Stevens with the headlock. Dante still trying to fight out of, trying to reverse it. But another takeover. Shoulders were down. Ref got to a two count. And Dante still able to kick out of it. Back up on their feet again. Dante still pulling at the hair of Logan Stevens being worn by the ref. Sends him into the ropes. But this time it's Logan Stevens with the shoulder tackle. Both men just sizing each other up. Another tie up in the middle of the ring. Dante's still raking the eyes. As he starts to pummel the Jesus freak Logan Stevens. Kicks him. And that got his attention. That made him mad. Logan Stevens. What do you got? Huh? Looks like he may deliver kicks of his own. And he does. Except for this man rock Dante Steele. Gets him again, gets him off his feet. This time kicks him in the back of the head. Whips him into the ropes. And another giant shoulder tackle. Taking down the Southern States champion. Backs him into the corner. And chops him. Dante still gets out of that maneuver by raking the eyes again. The 
delivering headbutts, which may have hurt Dante Steele as much as it hurt Logan Stevens. And now he's got him down on the mat, choking him. Being warned by the referee. Now he's choking him again. He's got him up on the middle rope. Again, being warned by the referee, he may be disqualified. And again, putting all the weight of his body on the neck of Logan Stevens, choking him out on that middle rope. And again, another chokehold. He's got to the count of five before he's disqualified. Stevens doing his best to fight out of it. Throwing those forearms at him. Whips him into the ropes again. This time, drops him with a knee. And we have a pitfall, one, two. Dante still able to keep out. But Logan Stevens was just that close to becoming the new Southern States champion. Tries to whip him in the corner, still reverses it. Delivers a splash. And a snap suplex. Dante still is sure enjoying himself now that Stevens is face down on the mat. Got him in a submission maneuver in the middle of the, the ring. Ref is warning me, he's grabbing at the eyes and the nose. Just like the rest of these freaks. Logan Stevens nowhere near the ropes to break the hold. He's gonna have to do something. Dante still breaks it himself. Not satisfied with that amount of punishment. It looks like he's unwinding his wrist tape. And again, choking a blatant chokehold. The ref is gonna have to step in. He may disqualify Dante Steele. Picks him up, drops him with a scoop slam. Scoop slam. This time he just drags that foot right across the forehead of the Jesus freak. Dante Steele is in full control of this match now. Another submission maneuver. And I don't think that Dante still expects him to tap out of this. I think this is more of a, a strategy just to wear him down. But Logan Stevens trying, trying to get momentum going his way. Fighting out of it. Throw those chops to the gut. And delivers a running kick. That almost took off the head of Dante Steele. And he went over to a pitfall. One, two. And almost three, we almost had a new Southern States champion, but Dante still able to kick out at the very last moment. Whips him into the opposite corner. Chest first, Dante still in a world of hurt now. Sends him flying there with another pinball. One, two, and another kick out. Amazing. And this time, Logan Stevens is starting to get a little frustrated. What does he have to do to get three against Dante Steele? And another ball pin. One, two, 
And another kick out. The frustrations of Logan Stevens are coming to the surface. Wondering what he's going to have to do to win this match. He's tried just about everything so far and hasn't been able to deliver yet. And he just left himself wide open for that super kick. Dante Steele connects with authority. But Steele is so hurt he hasn't been able to drag that arm across for a pinfall. Here we go. We got one. One. Two. But just too much time was taken. Wasn't able to get that three, three count. Now Dante still voicing his frustrations. Jerome Jackson, the referee. He needs to be careful, he needs to be alert. Turning his back on an opponent in CCW is never a wise decision. Stevens has made his way up to his knees. Goes for another super kick. Misses with a, but a spinning heel kick takes him down. Out of desperation. Gets to him, one, two, and another kick out. And Logan Stevens is starting to lose it in the center of the ring. Come on, Ralph! Two, three! Two, sir! Kick out! Both men have put up one heck of a fight in this match. Goes for a famous serve, but misses. Dante still able to move out of the way of that one. Picks him up for another scoop slam. And it looks like he's gonna go to the top rope. High risk maneuver. And he delivers a flying elbow. One, two. And Logan Stevens mustering the strength to kick out of this one. And Dante Steele has himself a tantrum as he cannot believe that he did not just win that match. Both men giving it, they're all in this one. And frustration boiling to the surface on behalf of both men. Stevens makes his way back up to his feet. Another famous for this time he connects. Will this be enough? One, two, and no, it's not quite enough. And even the crowd can't believe it this time. We have never seen this amount of frustration from Logan Stevens before. He needs to stay focused. He wants to regain that Southern States Championship. Here we go, another pinball. One, two, and again, just a two count. What more can he give? Again, trying to get the crowd pumped up, trying to get him back into this match. Build some momentum. Going for another famous turn. This time he misses again. And another super kick connects directly on the chin. This has got to be it. One, two, three. And that is it. Dante Steele retains the CCW Southern States Championship.
Southern States Champion from the Society of Dante Steel. Just scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. First, from the Soviet Union, here is the Russian Assassin. Welcome to this week's edition of Superstars of the Ring. I am your host, Eric Stuck, and we've got an exciting match set to go for you here in the ring. You see the Russian assassin and coming to the ring now. One of the most popular superstars in CCW, that is Shooter McGee. Looking to use his amateur wrestling background to take down the Russian assassin. You can see the fans absolutely love Shooter McGee here at Wrestle Bash 25. Russian Assassin has not had very much luck here lately in the CCW. We'll look to see if he can turn that luck around against Shooter McGee as this match gets ready to start. And the Assassin, the Russian Assassin, attacking Shooter McGee before the match starts. The match is underway now. Shooter McGee posing with the fans, unfortunately. Turning his back on the Russian assassin, the assassin goes to the attack with a running clothesline into the corner. And now he just smacks him around with a show of total disrespect and just shoves him to the ground. 
but he wastes a little too much time and a belly to belly suplex. One. Caught him by surprise. A belly to belly suplex. And the Russian assassin has to escape to the outside of the ring. Not expecting that. Come on, back in the ring. Three. The assassin gets back into the ring here. Should we need prime and ready? Colin elbow, elbow tie up. He pushes him back into the corner. Whips him. It's a reversal by the Russian assassin. But this time he misses with that running clothesline. And Shoot McGee delivers a clothesline of his own. The Russian assassin is down. Shooter helps him up. What's he having story here? Another reversal into the ropes. Lots of reversals happening here. And another belly to belly suplex. The assassin is hurting, rising in pain in the center of the ring. And McGee is fired up, pumped up. The assassin to his feet. A front Russian leg sweep. Poetic justice, one, two, three. And that's all it takes. The Russian assassin is defeated. Shu McGee comes out your winner here at WrestleFast 25. You can call me what my friend Diamond here calls me, which is beautiful. And for the rest of you, well, you can just call me your majesty. I have come to CCW and found the best of the best because that's what Hollywood does. Not that any of you would understand that clearly. By the end of the night, all of you will do exactly what everybody else does, and that is bow down and kiss my boots. Ladies and gentlemen, Diamond Dave and Her Majesty. Cincinnati, Ohio. Here is the controversial one. Les Butch. 
there, wrestling fans. Welcome to this week's edition of Superstars of the Ring. I'm your host, Aaron Smith, and this is the match for the Alternative Championship. A championship being brought back by CCW. And it looks like it's going to be less fortunate in the American Prodigy starting this match off the way it works. It's pretty simple. We have three teams of two. Look at less fortunate. Tagging in Frankie Morris. We have three teams of two. Once the first two teams are eliminated, the tag team partners from the winning team will square up with each other. And the winner of that match will be the new alternative champion. And here in the ring we see Frankie Morris taking on the 2015 Rookie of the Year, the American Prodigy. American Prodigy, his tag team partner, we saw him coming out earlier, Jay Lee. Frankie Morris has been tagged with Society of Sins, Pacifist. And there you see, not in the ring currently, that is Skylark and Less Fortunate. This should be a great match to crown a new champion here at CCW. Frankie's not been able to get much offense going in his first few matches here in CCW, but not looking too bad. We got a shoulder tackle by American Prodigy and a headlock in the middle of the ring. Frankie reaching for his tag team partner. Prodigy tagging Skylar. He can tag in any person from another team. Skylark squaring off with Frankie Morris in the middle of the ring there. Frankie getting a headlock in. And a takeover. Frankie feeling a little confident, a little cocky with his fans. He's going to need to focus if he wants to win this match. Skylark, one of the most experienced and entertaining performers in the history of CCW. Frankie looking pretty good right now. Frankie goes to tag in Pekovis, and Pekovis wants nothing of it, so Frankie's stuck in the ring. Frankie looks for a tag tag, less fortunate, but fortunate can't enter the match. The Skylark and Fortunate are tag team partners. Fortunate smacks him in the face as punishment. Skylark throwing big forearms, and Frankie fighting back with some forearms of his own. Skylark with a snap mirror, taking him down. Frankie needs to get out of this match. He has been in this match since it started. You gotta think that's gonna wear him down. Potentially eliminating himself and Pekovis from this match. Pekovis certainly does not want that. He has not even had a chance to enter the match yet. Skylark tags Fortune, less fortunate in the ring. The controversial less fortunate. Ah. The submission maneuver. And those patented kicks right to the spine of Frankie Morris. And then he drops an elbow. And now he jaws with the fans because that's what he's best known for. American Prodigy in the match. Frankie tried to tag in Jay Lee, but Prodigy had already been tagged in. And finally, a shoulder tackle by Frankie Morris. Holding his own here. Frankie tags in Pegavis, whether Pegavis wanted it or not. Now it's Pekovis and the American Prodigy swearing off. USA! USA! Still looking for the first team to be eliminated in this alternative championship match. 
And Pacovis goes to work. Has to be called off by the referee from a tight American Prodigy in the corner. Prodigy tags in the martial art expert, Jay Lee. Vastly over the last year. Looking to win his first belt here in CCW. Why not be the alternative champion? But right now he's contending with Pekovis, who's got one of the most meanest game streaks in CCW today as he drops down to the left elbow of Jay Lee. Brings his shin right across the skull of Pekovus. Pekovus is down. Pekovus tags in, less fortunate. Goes to the attack on Jay Lee. And yells at him to tag an American Prodigy. And he goes on the attack on the Prodigy as well. Mission maneuver. Got an arm wrist back. He might have to submit. He's nowhere near the ropes. Tell the ref no. Reverses it. Sit down, power bomb. Can he get the pin? Rolls him. Wasting a lot of time here. Fortunate's dead weight. One, just too much time wasted trying to get him in the pin and Pekovus breaks it up. Although I'm not sure why because that would have eliminated one team. Jay Lee tags back into the match. Skylark goes to the attack. You guys, they're exchanging blows back and forth. Lands on his feet and a spinning heel kick by Jay Lee. Since Skylar flying, and this could be it. Rolls him over. One. Fortunate breaks up that pinfall, keeping his team alive. Keep in mind, he's not doing that to help his team, he's doing that to help himself. As the final team that wins will face off with each other, and the winner of that match will be the new alternative champion. Unfortunate breaking up. That's a efficient maneuver. Heck of us hopping out. Daly needs to make a tag, and he does the American Prodigy back into the ring. With a running drop kick. Skylark gets him up. He was going to set him up for a maneuver, but Skylark, I'm sorry, fortunate, broke that up, and Skylark gets a drop kick, taking him out. And neither one of Pekovis or Frankie wants it in this ring. So Skylark's forced to tag in, less fortunate. And that's gotta be it, he's gonna have to tap, he's nowhere near the ropes. Can he get out of this, can he reverse it? Fortunate pleading with him to give up. And he has no choice, the American Prodigy has to tap out. And now we are down to two teams as the American Prodigy and Jay Lee have been eliminated from the match. So our final two teams will be Skylark and Less Fortunate taking on Frankie Morris and Pekovis. The winners 
of this match will face off with each other for the alternative championship. One of these four men will be our new alternative champion. And we got Frankie Morris in the ring to get Frankie the least experienced out of the four men in the ring. Looking to make a big name for himself. But he's got a long road ahead of him in a high mountain climb. Skylark is one of the most innovative performers in the history of CCW. And here he goes, here's some innovation right now. Up on the top rope. Sends him down, sends him flying. Frankie's down, one, two. Pekovus wisely interferes and breaks up that pin. Big uppercut. But Frankie with an atomic drop. Skylar hurting. Frankie feeling the momentum. A double arm takedown. Frankie looking good. And tags in Pekovis. Pekovis didn't reach for the tag. Frankie tagged him in anyways. And now it's Pekovis and Skylark. Less fortunate not liking the way the submission holds are being applied, arguing with the referee. They get fortunate doing everything he can to keep his team alive. So that is he and Skylar who face off for the alternative championship. And again, interrupting, arguing with the ref. Beckman whips Skylar into the ropes. This is. But knocks yes, him yes, down. Yes, Skylar yes, may be out of this. One. But a drop kick by Less Fortunate breaks up that pinball, which would have been truly a three count. Fortunate helps in Frankie Morris the hard way. He's dragging him by the air to the corner. He just begins stopping Frankie Morris. Now Fortunate goes to work on Pekovus. Double team maneuver. A double drop kick. Less Fortunate with all of that pressure, all that force of his feet going into the face of Frankie Morris. Same can be said for Pekovic in the opposite corner and here another high risk maneuver by Skylark and less fortunate. They take off and a double drop kick. Some teamwork by Fortunate. A double pin, one, two. Three, and that's it. Pekovic and Frankie Morris have been eliminated from the match. And it will be Skylark and Less Fortunate who will square up one-on-one -on -one for the alternative championship. It was a valiant effort by Frankie Morris. They came up just short in this big, big six-man elimination match. Get ready to square off against each other. And we got to see if even Skylark and Less Fortunate can continue in this. The high flying one, Skylark! The winner of this match will be your new CCW Alternative Champion. <laughs> looks like Fortunate, I'm sorry, it looks like Frankie Morris and Pekovis are fighting down the aisle wave. Get him! I like both of you! 
Now we are about to be underway. Skylark and Less Fortunate. One of these men will be our new alternative champion here in CTW. Fortunate wanting a handshake, but can Skylark trust him? Shakes his hand. You did a good job. And of course he can't trust him. Fortunate kicks him in the gut, sends him into the ropes, misses with a close side. A Hurricane Rana. Skylark with a Hurricane Rana. Arm drag. And a huge drop kick. This could be it. One, two, not, not quite enough. And now Skylark gets taken down, but only on one count. No, two. Very fast paced action here in the ring between Skylark and Les Fortunate. Skylark reverses, roll up one, two, three, that's it. We have a new alternative champion and Les Fortunate cannot believe it. Look at the look on his face. He cannot believe he just lost this match. But Skylark is the new CCW alternative champion. Last fortunate cannot believe what has just happened. Skylark pins him with the roll up. And that's all that it takes. Skylark is, wait, what is this? That is Hayden Price. What is he doing? We haven't seen Hayden Price here in over six months. He's attacking Skylark. What is he doing? Skylar just went through a brutal matchup against five men. He won the Ontario Championship. Hayden Price coming out of nowhere. He's attacking Skylar mercilessly. What is he doing? Flash and cash, Hayden Price. Sends him up. Why would he attack Skylark like this? Where did he come from? We've got to get security involved. Referee is demanding. He leaves the match. He leaves the ring. And it looks like Aiden Price is going to be escorted out of this building after viciously attacking Skylark. Get out of here. Go the same way you went. And it looks like Aiden Price is being escorted out of this match. Out of this building, I should say. After attacking Skylark, your new alternative champion. What is Hayden Price thinking? There he is, Skylark, your new CCW Alternative Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in your new CCW Alternative Champion, the High Go. I'm gonna watch his back. You got more without, without coming from. Out. I'm out, man.
Deuces! Disqualification street fight. Falls count anywhere. And this one's been brooding for a very, very long time. Solo Jones, one of the most powerful men in Continental Championship wrestling today. You see him stepping into the ring now, awaiting his opponent, the legendary Chris Turner. from the fans here tonight. They absolutely love the legendary Chris Turner. But he's going to have to get this this meet and greet he's doing with the fans out of the way. He's got one focus tonight and that is Solo Jones. Chris Turner, earning the name Legendary. He's got the fans here riled up, and this match is about to get underway. You can see he's not in his traditional wrestling gear. It looks like he's going to go look for some, some hardware on the outside of the ring there. Throwing that trash can full of weapons. You may as well just call them weapons. There's frying pans, there's kendo sticks. And Solo Jones goes to the attack as soon as Turner gets into the ring. This match is underway. Gets whipped into the corner, and Solo Jones, a running splash there, and the first thing he picks up is a kendo stick, and he lays it down, and you can hear that smack across the back of Chris Turner echoing throughout the building. And there he just drives the end of that kendo stick right into the neck and the throat of Chris Turner, and Turner goes to the outside to kind of regain some momentum here trying to regain his composure and Turner is still being attacked by Solo Jones. Solo Jones not letting up in this match whatsoever. They make their way around the ring here. Like I said there's no disqualifications in this match. The referee is only here essentially. And Turner getting some revenge with that kindness of state. Like I said the referee is only here to make a, a pin count. Now Chris Turner has the upper hand, and he drives that kiddo stick right between the legs of Solo Jones. And now he bounces the stick right off the forehead, and we got our first pinball, one, two. Solo Jones, not, not quite put out of this match yet. And he gets rammed into the steel post. Doesn't phase him, but the kiddo stick catches him by surprise. Just like every time we've seen these guys meet, it's an all-out brawl. Nothing's different. Solo Jones rolls Chris Turner back into the ring. Back where those array of weapons are. And 
there he takes the trash can. And he sticks it on top of Chris Turner. Turner is stuck inside that trash can. What's he got in store here? He runs and delivers another smash. And you see that trash can has collapsed onto the head of Chris Turner, who's in a very, very bad spot. Cannot see. And may be unconscious. He's not moving. One, two. Turner, out of pure instinct, gets the shoulder up. Solo Jones choking Chris Turner, and this is legal. You see the ref not counting. No disqualification in this match. Turner's going to have to fight his way out of this. Picks him up with a scoop slam. Now he's got those cookie sheets. What's he got in store? Lining them up in the center of the ring. Looks like he's gonna drop him right on top of those hard cookie sheets and they fold like they're nothing under the weight of Chris Turner. He's brought down by the powerful Solo Jones. We'll get another pinfall, one, two. And again, Turner able to get that shoulder up. Solo Jones got him in the bear hug. Chris Turner's got that cookie sheet. He's got to muster the uh, strength and the energy to fight out of this. And he does. He finally hits him with that cookie sheet. Rocks him a little bit. He grabs that trash can. Drops it over the skull of Solo Jones. This could be it. One, two. But not quite enough, so Jones rolls out of this one. Both men are on the ground, both men are hurting bad. Turner to his knees. He may be the first one up on his feet, and indeed he is. And he collapses in the corner. He might be hurt badly. So Jones gets to his feet. He's got that trash can in hand. What's he got? Swings and misses, Turner gets out of the way. And Turner brings him down face first onto that trash can. And that could be at one, two, three, and that's it. That is enough to put him away. The legendary Chris Turner comes out victorious here at WrestleFast 25. He might be a winner, but you can tell he does not feel like a winner right now. Both men in a lot of pain. Chris Turner writhing in pain in the center of the ring. But he is the winner.
appreciate everything you've done for me. I appreciate the fans. The promotion has been a great promotion to work for. And, you know, I just can't, I just can't think about what it would have been like, my career, what it, what it would have been without CCW being involved in it. Our next event for the CW Tag Team Championship. Introducing first the challengers, the team of Mad Dog Miller. Hey there, wrestling fans. Welcome to this week's edition of Superstars of the Ring. I am your host, Eric Snook. And we've got some great action coming at you here. This is going to be for the CCW Tag Team Championship. You see making their way to the ring now, the team of K-9 Carnage. They are the challengers in this match. But they held their tag team championship for a very long time here in CCW, but lost it a few months ago to Bad Guy D. You just got to know that Bad Dog Brody and Mad Dog Miller want nothing more than to regain their lost CCW Tag Team Championship. Arrival of Bad Guy, Johnny Maverick, Preston Paradise. If there were two individuals in the history of CCW that could contend with K9 Carnage, it's these two guys. They won their CCW Tag Team Championship in auspicious circumstances. But nevertheless, they are the tag team champions. We've seen these two teams square off with each other multiple times throughout the past. And it is some of the most heavy hitting that you will ever see inside the wrestling ring. As we await the arrival of Bad Guy taking their time getting to the ring. But here they are, the tag team champions. Bad guy. Over the course of their tag team ring, K9 Carnage has what they call the open door challenge. Any tag team can come in, challenge for those belts. They didn't have to be CCW. Superstars, they could be from any organization. And Bad Guy Inc. are the ones who took advantage of that. These guys have had some brutal, brutal matches over the past year. And this is set to be the biggest one of them all here at Wrestle Bash 25. Four of the biggest competitors in CCW will square off. They hold, they hold those tag team belts, but they also hold that bone, that symbol of canine carnage. Those guys have some nasty attitude and they live up to their name. They are eating bad. Carnage not wasting any time. They've spent a lot of time being attacked by Bad Guy E. So this time they're going to turn it on them. Square off all four men are in the middle of the ring. Mark Falcone's going to have to try to do something to get in between these guys. But what can he do really? Double whipping to the ropes. 
Carnage ducks and a double shoulder tackle and Bad Guy Inc. are on the ground and out of the ring and Bad Guy Inc. are in solid control trying to get that competitive advantage and that psychological advantage as well. Bad Guy Inc. on the outside of the ring trying to regain their composure trying to figure out what just happened to them. They're usually the ones on the attack, and this time, they were on the defensive. So who's gonna start this match off first? It looks like it's gonna be Preston Paradise. That is Mad Dog Miller. See him there, he is pure muscle. These are four of the strongest men we have ever seen here at CCW. Preston Paradise with the early advantage with an armbar and Mad Dog Miller turns it around. Normally we see some hard hitting brawling between these guys, but here we got some technical wrestling going on. We got a snapmare takeover. And Mad Dog Miller drives that head down into the skull of Preston Paradise. And it's like he's setting him up for Fireman Scary gets him down. Preston Paradise in the corner of Canine Carnage. Not where he wants to be. We've seen in the past how Bad Guy Inc. have been able to isolate Canine Carnage and keep him out of their own corner. Looks like they have a great strategy here tonight. Bad Dog Brody is the legal man. It looks like he's going to be whipped into the corner. Delivers a running clothesline to Preston Paradise. And a Bulldog by Mad Dog Miller as Bad Dog Brody takes control here in the center of the ring. And delivering those massive chops that knock the breath right out of you. Brody's been played by injuries over the past few months. He's had arm injuries, he's had knee injuries. But he looks to be healthy tonight. Or at least he's not appearing to be unhealthy. You can't give away anything. Brody gets him back into the corner and another tag in. Mad Dog Miller is the legal man and they're going to do a double team maneuver here. And it's a shoulder tackle by both men. Paradise hits the ground hard, but he's a long ways away from his tag team partner, Johnny Maverick. Again, Mad Dog Brody tagged back into the ring. Paradise has not been able to tag at all. Johnny Maverick's a helpless man on his side of the ring. They're just going to keep driving those shoulders into the gut. You can see this just tagging in, tagging out, nothing. Preston Paradise can do, there's no defense. Johnny Maverick, like I said, helpless in his corner. You can see this is a steady rotation, keeping the fresh man in. Finally, Mad Dog Miller gets him out of the corner and wrenches down on the head and the chin of Preston Paradise. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Come on. Come on. How about it, you good? No. No. What do we have here? Looks like he's setting him up for a suplex. Gets him up. Preston Paradise over 300 pounds. Mad Dog Miller picks him up like he's nothing and slams him to the ground. Paradise in a world of hurt right now. Tag team champions are not looking great. As K9 Carnage is effectively able to keep the man in the corner. 
and a drop kick, a missile drop kick by the big man, Bad Dog Brody, the biggest man in this match of big men. Takes Paradise off his feet. And again, they have him into the corner. Fresh man staying in this match. Mad Dog Miller getting a warning from the ref. Trying to keep him out of the corner, and that was just the opening that Paradise needed. Finally getting some offense in this match. Now he's going to deliver some chops of his own. But to no avail, he finally gets him with a snap mirror, takes him down with a headlock. Paradise doing all he can to keep his head above water in this match. He has taken a massive beating since the start of the match. And finally, Maverick gets him to the ring, comes down with a double axe handle. Paradise finally out of the match. Maverick, the freshest man in this match, going to work on the left arm of Mad Dog Miller, dropping those knees down. For the first time in this match, we see Mad Dog Miller on his back. We have not seen the usual back and forth between these guys, and now delivering those chops in the corner. Johnny Maverick in solid control, trying to avenge his partner, who was stuck on the opposite side of the ring the entire first part of the match. Johnny Maverick doing his best to slow down the pace of the match. And you see there he was rubbing the face of Mad Dog Miller into the canvas, adding insult to injury. And now he'll tag the freshman in. This is the strategy that we've come to learn from Bad Guy Inc. That massive spine buster, one, two. Almost caught him by surprise with that spine buster. With a two count. He drops that knee down right across the chin of Mad Dog Miller. He's got the ropes. Paradise has no choice but to break this hold before he gets disqualified. Maverick sneaks into the ring, double teaming Mad Dog Miller while the ref was distracted by Bad Dog Brody. We've seen a reversal of fortunes here. The fresh man tagging in, Johnny Maverick. And now it's Mad Dog Miller who needs desperately to get a tag to Bad Dog Brody to stay into this match. Mad Dog Miller, you see his foot is on the rope to break the hole. Again, the ref is distracted by Bad Dog Brody, a very frustrated Bad Dog Brody to do nothing as he watches his tag team partner being double teamed. And Maverick drops those elbows one after the other right into the sternum of Mad Dog Miller. The impressive Paradise tags in. And another double team maneuver. And it's a double. Russian leg sweep. And again, Bad Dog Brody frustrated that he can do nothing as he watches his tag team partner being double teamed. Paradise whips him into the ropes. Mad Dog Miller catches a knee. And who's proud of himself now? That's Preston Paradise. The man who was catching a beating at the start of the match, he is now in full control over Mad Dog Miller. Whips him in the ropes again. And this time, it's an elbow that takes Mad Dog Miller off his feet. One, two. 
And Mad Dog Miller barely able to get the shoulder up on that to break that pinfall. And now Paradise stopping on the hand. And he's gonna wrench back that shoulder and elbow. Putting as much pressure on it, trying to take that strength out of the strength is the most important thing to the arsenal of canine carnage. And you can see there, just keeps going to work on that left arm of Mad Dog Miller. Now Johnny Maverick in the ring. And a double suplex takes both men to get Mad Dog Miller up into the air, but they do it, and they do it effectively. And here's a pinfall one. And Mad Dog Brody distracts the ref. Nothing Johnny Maverick can do. That may have been the end of the match. And they go right back to work. Wrenching up on that left arm. Let's go, Mad Dog. Come on. Of Mad Dog Come on, Miller. Mad Dog. Mad Dog. Mad Dog. Mad Dog. Maverick trying to headbutt. Mad Dog Miller. You can see it's backfiring. Miller shows him how it's done. Maverick rocking, falling back into the corner. Here we go. El more headbutts, more headbutts, over and over again, driving the head into the chest. Like cannonball shots right into the chest of Johnny Maverick. And Mad Dog Miller goes for the pin, one, two. Not, not quite a two count. Both men back to their feet. Whips them into the ropes. Misses the clothesline. And a double clothesline. Both men are down. Both men are out. The ref begins his count. It could be a double count out. Which does not help the cause of canine carnage. A double count out means that bad guy is will retain the tag team championship. He always got to do is just turn around. He's so close. Both men are so close to tagging their partner in. Miller tags in Bad Dog Brody. Paradise is in. Goes down with a clothesline. Maverick goes down. And again, delivering his clotheslines. Brody just outnumbered by Bad Guy Inc. there. Couldn't capitalize on that attack, but he goes to work on Johnny Maverick. He's got to watch out. Paradise enters the ring and attacks the knee. That's that injured left knee of Bad Dog Brody, who is now writhing in pain. You see, he's still not fully recovered from that injury. Now Bad Guy Inc. have exposed that injury and are going to go to work on the left knee of Bad Dog Brody. Come on, Bad Dog! Come on. And as big as he is, he is very far away from the ropes. Can't break the hold. He's going to have to do something to get out of this. You can see the pain and the anguish in the face of Bad Dog Brody as Paradise wrenches down on that knee. Get over here! And there you see just inches away from being able to tag in Mad Dog Miller. So close, but so far away. What does he have to do to get out of this? What does Canine Carnage got to do to win back the CCW Tag Team Championship? Right now, it is not looking good. Bad guy Inc. Gonna make a wish. Driving the legs apart, stretching out all the muscles with that wishbone. And you see Maverick again going to work on the injured left leg. They're too close to the ropes. Brody able to grab the ropes and break that hold. He needs to get back to his corner and tag in Mad Dog Miller. Come on, get up! 
Shoulders are down two. You can see just how close the ref was from a three count. Brody's got to still be cognizant of what is happening. Can't let those shoulders go down. And now a half Boston Crab. Brody is in a very bad way in the middle of the ring. Power his way out of it, but he's just helpless. And now Paradise, the fresh man in the ring, he's gonna drive all of his weight down onto that left leg. This is old school wrestling tactics here. Pick a body part, you isolate it, and you take that man out, and that's exactly what bad guy he is trying to do. And again, Johnny Maverick into the ring. Brody's so close, but so far away. Another pinfall, one, two. Brody able to get the shoulder up. He's gonna try it again, and again, the shoulder goes up. Maverick getting frustrated. Wrestling Paradise tags into the match once again. And there you see him just smacking Matt, Bad Dog Brody in the face. The frustration of Bad Guy coming out as they gotta wonder what they have to do to finally put away K9 Carnage. Johnny Maverick attacking Mad Dog Miller on the outside of the ring. These two are going at it on the outside of the ring. And Maverick drives Mad Dog Miller into the ring post. And Paradise knocked out Bad Dog Brody in the center of the ring with that bone, but the ref doesn't see it. One, two, and somehow Bad Dog Brody able to get the shoulder up. And Paradise cannot believe it. Bad Dog Brody right in the head with that bone. He thought it was going to be enough, but Brody able to somehow get the shoulder up. And again, he's going to try with the bone again. Brody gets out of the way. And he nails his tag team partner, Preston Paradise, with that bone. And he better turn around. He doesn't see what's lurking behind him, but K9 Carnage is ready and waiting. The ref wrestles the bone away from him, and a 3D, and this could be it. One, two, three, and that is it. K9 Carnage have regained the CCW Tag Team Championship. The dirty tactics of bad guys did not work this time, and we have new CCW Tag Team Champions. As once again, Mad Dog Miller, Bad Dog Brody have won tag team gold in CCW.
Hello wrestling fans, welcome to this week's edition of Superstars of the Ring. I am your host, Eric Snook, and this is it. This is the main event of WrestleBash 25, and that is one of our number one contenders, the former CCW heavyweight champion, Jamie McKinnon, the outlaw. Who should I remind? I should remind you, he has never lost that CCW title stripped from him last year after being attacked by SOS in the main event of last year's Wrestle Bash. This is as angry and fierce as we have ever seen Jamie McKinnon with a good reason to be upset. Like I said, he never lost the championship. It was stripped of him. And now he's looking to regain it here. Here we see coming out now. The other number one contender for the title, that is the unstoppable Eric Moore, who two years ago in this very building at Bernardina Beach Middle School, Eric Moore made his debut in CCW. And now he's in the main event in the biggest match of his career with a chance of walking out as the CCW Heavyweight Champion. like Eric Moore and Jamie McKinnon. They're ready to go at it now, but we still have one more competitor to enter this match. And that is the champion, Daniel Anderson, who we'll be seeing here momentarily. See the referee, Jerome Jackson, already having to keep these guys separated before this match even starts. There he is, being accompanied to the ring by Diamond Dave, his manager, and his new bodyguard, Hollywood Von Royal, making her CCW debut tonight here at WrestleBash 25. She is a six foot tall professional wrestler who is now in the corner of Daniel Anderson alongside Diamond Dave. Trained by Dory Funk. She's going to be a huge threat here in CCW. The cards are stacked against the outlaw Jamie McKinnon, Eric Moore. For the likes of Diamond Dave, Hollywood Von Royal, and they're the champion, Daniel Anderson. This is a three-way dance for the CCW Heavyweight Championship. What that means, the first competitor to land a pinfall or a submission wins the match. That means Daniel Anderson does not even have to be pinned and he can still lose that CCW Heavyweight Championship that he loves so dearly. As you see, he's kissing that belt in the corner of the ring almost hesitant to even give it away to the referee. Daniel Anderson, a multi-generational wrestler. The famous Anderson family. And there you see on the apron of the ring, the outlaw, Jamie McKinnon. Member of the Hall of Honor here in CCW already. Multi-time heavyweight champion. He wants to get his title back. And there you see Eric Moore. One of the most popular superstars ever here in CCW. And Jamie McKinnon spits on the belt. And I think we're about to get this match 
underway. Eric Moore goes for the attack, clotheslining Jamie McKinnon and gets some air drop kicks. Daniel Anderson who rolls out to the side of the ring. Jamie McKinnon with a chop and these guys are gonna go back and forth with the chops. Who's gonna have the upper hand? And now Daniel Anderson gets in the ring and he's gonna get attacked by both men. And he rolls out outside of the ring again and McKinnon goes to work on Eric Moore in the center of the ring. Flipping him over, Moore nips up, Enziguri lands that shit right on the side of the head of the outlaw. Now the outlaw is in trouble. Eric Moore ramming the head into the top turnbuckle. And now McKinnon's in trouble and he's rolling, trying to get to the outside of the ring. Eric Moore's gonna help him up. If McKinnon reverses. And we have a roll up, this might be in one. Daniel Anderson trying to sneak away with a victory there. But Eric Moore able to kick out at a swinging neck breaker. And just a two count. Daniel Anderson dumping Eric Moore to the outside of the ring. And now Daniel Anderson is the man in control in the center of the ring. Jamie McKinnon and Eric Moore are gonna go to work on each other outside of the ring and Moore reverses it since Jamie McKinnon flying into that steel ring post and now with the referee's back turn Hollywood Von Royal going to work on Jamie McKinney on the outside of the ring and Daniel Anderson choking Eric Moore in the center of the ring and it looks like it looks like Hollywood Von Royal may be getting kicked out Meanwhile, Eric Moore, Daniel Anderson battling in the corner. And it's official, Drum Jackson has kicked out Diamond Dave and Hollywood Von Royal as they exit. And there goes the entire game plan for the champion, Daniel Anderson. His manager and his bodyguard to be kicked out of ringside. And Eric Moore goes with the roll up one, two, we almost had a new champion right there. Now Daniel Anderson slows down the pace of the match, or at least tries to. He's got Eric Moore down in the center of the ring. Meanwhile, Jamie McKinnon trying to recover on the outside of the ring. And there's some of that cockiness that we have seen from Daniel Anderson over the past six months, seven months since he won the title back at Stampede. Now he's delivering those very quick and precise elbows to the chest of Eric Moore. And a two and a half count. Now story. Two, sir. Daniel Anderson arguing with the referee. Thought that was a slow count. Eric Moore in big trouble here. Anderson gets him into the corner, whips him into the opposite corner. And a belly to belly suplex. Devastating belly to belly suplex. And one, two, Eric Moore just able to get the shoulder up. Just barely able to get that shoulder up. See Daniel Anderson starting to get frustrated. Now he's jawing with the fans in attendance here. Cannot be a good strategy. But he's got two men to take on in this championship title match. He whips him into the corner again. This time Eric Moore reverses. And this could be setting him up for that signature splash. And Anderson reverses it. Gets him to the outside and he's gonna DDT him from the second row. And Eric Moore's, Eric Moore's skull bounces off the mat. This could be it, one, two. And again, Eric Moore barely able to get his shoulder up. Break the count, and he's just shoved to the outside of the ring. Again, Daniel Anderson standing alone in the ring, jawing with the audience not seeing the outlaw behind him. Uh, he, he knows he's there now. 
Owl starts clubbing him, whips him in the ropes. And a gigantic spine buster. One, two. And the Owl almost regained his championship. He's about a half a count short of a three count there. And now he's gonna go to work on Daniel Anderson in the corner there, stepping on him, dropping all that weight on the sternum of Daniel Anderson. And now he's gonna argue with the referee. He's almost gonna be disqualified. He's gotta kill a count of five to break the hold. He's gonna put him in the ropes. Drives that elbow right to the chin of Daniel Anderson, who is down and out. We might have another pinball here. Nope. Kidding. Just driving the face of Anderson into the mat. Anderson, you want to quit? You give up, Anderson. You said no. You said no. And again for the third time. Rep has been warning him the whole time, and now McKinnon getting to the face of Jerome Jackson. Last time these two guys were in the ring together, McKinnon delivered a lariat to Jerome Jackson, which resulted in a fine and a suspension. Now he's going to deliver those patented elbows, driving all his weight behind the force of that elbow. We got a Almost a three count there. McKinnon almost regaining the championship. And now he's arguing with the ref. Doesn't like the, the pace of the count. And so Anderson to kind of catch his breath, get to the ropes. And that may have done nothing but anger the outlaw, Jamie McKinnon. He backs him up into the corner. And whips him to the opposite corner, chest first. Anderson goes down. He tries to roll to the outside of the ring. McKinnon helps him out. Now, this time, McKinnon's in the ring, and Eric Moore runs in, trying to surprise him, but McKinnon catches on quickly. Now he's biting him. All three men have had an advantage in this match. All three men have had a disadvantage. But right now, it is Jamie McKinnon looking stronger than ever. Now McKinnon just toying with him. What is he setting him up for here? And he's gonna deliver elbows to the sternum and chest. The unstoppable Eric Moore, just like he did with Daniel Anderson moments ago. And a cocky pinball there, just puts a finger on him. It's gonna take a lot more than that to get Eric Moore down and out of this match. Now he climbs on top, and it looks like he's just gonna start wailing on him. And he does. Ref is warning him on the close fist. Now he's choking him. Jamie McKinnon needs to be careful or he will be disqualified from this match. It was illegal maneuvers he's pulling off. Whoops, the ropes, Eric Moore reverses. And a nice power slam, one, two. The kidding kicked out, Anderson realizing that his championship hopes were almost eliminated. He tries to get in the ring. Now all three men are in the ring. And a snap suplex. On the pinball one, two, and this time McKinnon was able to break the fall. All three men desperate to stay in this match. All three men have taken an incredible, an incredible beating in this match. They all know what is important, and that is winning the CCW Heavyweight Championship, being the number one person in this industry. Come on now, watch your eyes, watch your eyes. And a belly to back suplex there. One, one, two, and almost a three, a three count. Eric Moore, I believe, is just running on pure instinct at this, po at this point. He, he can All right, continue. Doesn't seem to know where he's at. 
does have the wherewithal to get that shoulder up. Getting grabs the arm of Eric Moore. Get up! Get up, you piece of crap! Get up! What does he have in store here? Now he's just kicking him in the, in the gut. I think Daniel Anderson wants a piece. And they are gonna double team the unstoppable Eric Moore. This could be a good strategy, eliminate him and go to work on each other. They whip him into the ropes. He ducks the clothesline and a double cross body block. And the fans are getting pumped up and so is Eric Moore. He's sensing his opportunity to take control of this match. He gets back to his feet. He's hurting. And he rams the heads together of Jamie McKinnon and Daniel Anderson. Both men fall back into opposite corners. Eric Moore delivers the splash to Jamie McKinnon and one for Daniel Anderson. Looks like he's gonna have another one, and a lariat. Went to the well one too many times, and Jamie McKinnon delivers the lariat. Just about knocks the head off of him. And now Daniel Anderson double arm DDT to Jamie McKinnon. And McKinnon rolling to the outside of the ring. Anderson's desperately trying to get to him so he can cover him for a pin. But now it's just Eric Moore and Daniel Anderson left in the ring together. Moore gets to his feet. Anderson does not see him. Kicks him in the gut and a stunner. This could be it. One, two, three. Incredible, we have a new CCW heavyweight champion. The unstoppable Eric Moore is our new champion. They said he couldn't do it. They said he was too young, too inexperienced. But here we see him as the new CCW champion at Wrestle Bash 25, the biggest event in the history of CCW. And Eric Moore will walk out with the heavyweight gold. There we see Jamie McKinnon, an irritated and frustrated Jamie McKinnon doing what he does best. Just throw debris into the ring, but the night belongs to Eric Moore as he celebrates with the fans here. Soaking it in. What an incredible match, Eric Moore. The unstoppable Eric Moore is the CCW Heavyweight Champion. And it looks like the locker room is emptying out to help Eric Moore celebrate his new championship victory. And the fans are loving it. Tag team partner Shuri D helping him celebrate alongside Frankie Morris, the American prodigy Jay Lee. What an incredible match. Eric Moore is the new heavyweight champion of Continental Championship Wrestling.
To learn all about the matches that we have scheduled for the event, simply keep following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, try to check into our website, ccwrestling.biz, for even further details. For everyone here at CCW, I'm Donnie Harris Jr. We'll see you at ringside.